Now, joining me now via Skype to discuss more about this uh, measures is Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong. Governor Lalong, it's good to have you join me on TVC Breakfast this morning. Good morning. Now, you have imposed uh, a 30-day sit-at-home order, and it's, it's met, it is expected that it might be renewed. But talk to us, basically, how effective would you say these uh, uh, measures have been? Well, uh, let me say that uh, we are not about imposing another one, but we've done it already. Because what I did was after the lockdown, complete lockdown in the state, I gave a period of uh, three days because people were crying, crying, crying here, here and there. And I said, OK, go back and restock and let's go back again. So the restock finished yesterday. And uh, today we've resumed again total lockdown in the state. And uh, like I said, uh, in uh, some of my interviews, I said the period, the, the concern now is about cross-border transmission, cross-border transmission. My, my opinion was that it's better to even find a possibility of locking down everywhere in the country. Otherwise, one state will lock down and there will be more pressures on other states. I can see many of the states now beginning to lock down. Some who are in partial lockdown now moving to full, full, uh, full lockdown because uh, we must, at this stage, this is the stage that we must be very, very serious in uh, containing this pandemic. Otherwise, uh, you can see that the, the rate is even growing instead of reducing. It is, it is growing. So for us, in Plateau State, we did the lockdown, but the, tra the, the pressure is still coming. So much pressure. Just two, yesterday, I had a truck of people, about 53. All of them tried to smuggle themselves. They passed through Kaduna in spite of the border closure. They went through Nasarawa and were not coming into Plateau. And then they were they, they were arrested at uh, and the Nasarawa border between Plateau and Nasarawa. And all of them were conveyed back to Plateau State. We've quarantined them, about 50-something of them. As it is, just within two or three days that we we released the, uh, the, lo the total lockdown, we have about 100 uh, people now isolated in our isolation center. So you see the more you lock down, it appears Nigerians being what they are, the more they try to, to struggle to move into the state. So the border, I think the border patrol, it should be very, very, uh, it's something that we must put attention to. Otherwise, you will continue to do everything in your state, but then people will come in with the virus from another state. All right, so Governor Lalong, how long will this new lockdown con is, is meant to last? What are you looking at? Well, uh, from our own perspective in Plateau State, we are also going along with what the federal government is doing and what uh, the NCDC is recommending. So we've added another seven days, which will make up uh, the 14 days uh, quarantine as required by, as, uh, pro uh, as provided by the NCDC. The NCDC so that we see what will happen generally in the country. Because it's not uh, something that is peculiar to a state. What we are doing, we are also following the trend to, in, in respect to what is happening nationwide. So we, we, today we are resuming for another seven days to see. I told them, and uh, well, we, we are not having a lot of challenges in Plateau State because it appears Plateau people are following. They are, they are very law abiding and are very obedient in respect to the lockout. Uh, I told you that what we are doing is that we are not leaving them in terms of palliatives. We started with the payment of salaries three days or four, three or four days after we locked down. And I explained to them, I said, I'm paying this salary. Please don't go and misuse it because the danger is ahead of us. Let us use the salary to stock our houses because we are eventually going to lock down. So after payment of salaries, I did partial lockdown. There were no complaints. But after that, we went again now for seven days total lockdown. And we're going into another lockdown. And I said, OK, I give you two, three, three days. Go and restock. Go and restock. Palliatives are now coming. So that we shouldn't have reasons to start complaining. Because the best thing we do is, like somebody said, it's a war. It's a world war. So when you are fighting a war, until you finish the war, you are not certain of whether you, are, you survive or not. All right. Now, let, let's talk about the issue of test centers and uh, isolation centers. We understand youth 
uh, the Joss University Teaching Hospital as well as the Specialist Teaching uh, Hospital as well as Bingham uh, uh, Hospital are, are some of the places are, you know, designated as isolation centers. But talk to us about the process of testing. How much of that is, is the government or is your government doing? Well, in terms of testing, I, I think we have three. Just you, you mentioned some of them. But the one that is properly being done now is at the NVRI, the National Research Institute, that's the Von Vett, the National Research, Veterinary Research Institute. And that is an institute that was set up almost 100 years. By the next four years, the institute will be 100 years. In this country, for research, especially in animals, and of course, you know that most of these diseases are coming through animals. So if we really want to get ahead, we should put concentration on that institute so that we will not be surprised when we see viruses like uh, the pandemic, the uh, COVID-19 coming up in another phases, so that these people will continue to do research. The, the research for Lassa fever was done there, was done in that place. Even Ebola, they are doing it in that place. So we, this should be a lesson for us so that we start focusing on some of these institutions that were established, rather than putting them off. And when we have an epidemic, then we start putting other new structures. So we have testing centers, we have laboratories that are equipped. So if we, if we are going to have more testing centers in Plateau State, we already have them. The Just International, the Just University Teaching Hospital, I have seen the lab, it's very equipped. I have seen the one at the Bingham University uh, Teaching Hospital, and of course, the one as Plateau State Specialist Hospital, all certified by World Health Organization. So in case this one is not enough, I think they should also look up to another opportunity of creating other testing centers. Because as it is now, people from Bauchi have trooped in, people from Nasarawa are moving in, people from Taraba are also moving into to Joss. So it is good that we have we had it in Joss. Gombe, even Gombe are rushing into uh, into uh, into just now, but the capacity of the testing center at the Von Veterinary Institute is 1,000. So we may get to a point where we have a lot of traffic over there, but we are saying that we are already equipped and we need more centers, if it is possible, to establish more centers in just. All right. Uh, All right. Talk, talk to us about the fumigation uh, going on um, within the 17 local government areas of the state. Uh, how effective is that against uh, the COVID-19? Uh, well, the, 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 the idea of fumigation, or we call it decontamination, uh, is not really fumigation, but decontamination. And uh, we had that idea right from the time that we had cases about Lassa fever. So we were already preparing to find partial uh, decontamination of the state to avoid uh, 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 occurrences of uh, other uh, diseases in the state. But uh, COVID-19 came on board. And when COVID-19 came on board, the first thing we did was, first of all, to uh, do the partial lockdown. When we did the partial lockdown, we realized that, yes, people were still coming in. Although we didn't have any case up to this moment, but we realized that uh, it is good to be proactive. And in order to be proactive, we, should, we shouldn't stay and wait for the disease for, for an index case in the state before we start be putting actions. So what we did was during the last lockdown, total lockdown, the first leg of the, the total lockdown, I now agree, we now agree that while we are going to, uh, we are doing the lockdown, we should also decontaminate the state. And so we did the contamination in all the 17 local governments. So we have an outfit already in the state, the Agri Training Center, which we had all the equipment. So it was very easy for us to do, to get the reagents, and then we mix them together. And that was what they did. In I think in less than it took them just four days to do the contamination in the whole state, both the capital and the 17 local governments that we had. And it was very, very effective. All right. Uh, you are the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. Uh, and some of the states in the north, like uh, Katsina State, are witnessing uh, uh, higher numbers, even Abuja and all of that. 
what are you and your colleagues doing in the north, in the north to ensure that uh, people are safe? Uh, well, uh, a, a week, about a week or two weeks ago, we had a meeting, a conference, a teleconference. I summoned all the governors to a teleconference and we had wonderful deliberations. Uh, we are looking even beyond COVID-19. We are looking beyond COVID. We've set up a committee, a very strong committee, to look beyond COVID-19 in the north. And that committee is already working. But, however, we must safeguard the people now before we get to even after. So what we have done in the north is, first of all, to, to, to ask, to demand for more testing centers. And also, the matter of palliative was very, very important. You can see that most states did not lock up because they were already concerned about the agitation for palliatives. Well, as it is now, palliatives are already coming. I've seen a lot of them in many, many of the northern states. So what we said is that the, the most important thing to address this issue is a lockdown. Whether we like it or not, we must do lockdown. And so, but then, if we are doing the lockdown, prepare the minds of the people. Nigerians can also be, uh, can also be very, very sentimental and emotional at periods like this. And so what we did was to be sure, we all agreed that let's go back and be thinking of, of uh, lockdown. But before the lockdown, prepare ourselves for palliatives. So our palliatives are now coming from federal government. Palliatives are now created by states in the north. And so because of that, it's very easy for people to agree to a lockdown. I've not seen much complaints about people locking down now. I've seen most states now locking down in the north. Yesterday, I just heard about uh, uh, Tatsina. I heard about Chikawa. And uh, probably before the week runs down, we are going to have more states. Because as you do the palliative, you lock down. You understand? Because people cannot go and sit down at home and uh, be crying of hunger while also battling with uh, the pande pandemic. And, uh, you know, I emphasize that you can quarantine people, but you can't quarantine uh, hunger. All right. Now, Governor, you talked about the issue of palliatives. Uh, that, let, me, let me take you on that. That is an area that uh, I know you would have also gotten reports or even seen viral videos from Nigerians who are, who are not very satisfied with the way that the palliatives are made, either with the issue of the cash transfers by the government or by the distribution of food. What is your opinion in that regard? Uh, well, I've read in the papers, I've read also in the media, some of the complaints that are coming with the palliatives. But as far as I'm concerned in Plateau, I don't think we have problem because we have been on this social investment for a very long time, for almost two years, because from the start, when it was under the office of the vice president, for every effort that was done for ballet, for things like that, I kid in, I had a focal person, very wonderful focal person that was also paying attention to it, always in Abuja, for every opportunity on the social investment uh, 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 project. So for states, I am sure, most of the states that are having complaint are states that are just keying in for the first time. But for us in the state, we have been in it for a very long time. We had our data about the poorest of the poor, the, the end power, and all other avenues that are done in the social investment program. So when this one came in, what we did was to put all the NGOs. I set up a committee. I have a very strong committee under the leadership of the deputy governor. And all the committees in respect to palliatives are there. And we, in, include, we included there all the traditional rulers, the religious leaders, the youth council, NGOs, the media, and everybody, all the stakeholders are members of this committee. So they decide, they have done their arrangements, and they have agreed as to how to go about the distribution of the palliatives. I know, too, even the one done by the Alaja Aliko Dangote and his group, the, the Kakovit, and even the one done by them himself, because we set up a trust fund. We turned of an endowment uh, 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 phone, and uh, of course, in my state, we have already a total of 61,000 beneficiaries. 61,000 beneficiaries in a in a population of 31 of 3. Point something million. We already have about 61,000 beneficiaries, and with the additional beneficiaries, that's what we are doing now, using our data 
to go and and get more information about those people to be added to be added to uh, as beneficiaries so for for me in the state we don't have a problem but i think in most of the states people should be patient you know the way people react to in nigeria a small thing that is going on everybody starts uh, uh starts suspecting they will say governors have taken money they want to take money they're going to siphon the money for god's sake governors will go and siphon money meant for this for this uh, activity especially at this crucial moment then that governor must be an irresponsible governor so to speak mm -hmm. i'm very sorry to say that but which governor will go and begin to put eyes on money like this when the governors themselves are the ones that are doing it before even getting uh, getting assistance from outside so i think people should get some respect uh, begin to respect some of the governors, respect the governors, leader, respect leadership. And uh, the president is doing his best, sending this pilot because we don't know when this thing will end. But we are hoping that with the cooperation from people, it will be addressed and it will soon go away. All right. Now let's talk about the issue of the COVID-19 support fund. It's something that a lot of people want to know how, how much has come in and how, what, what corporations or people are responding to it and how the monies are being utilized for the people so far. Well, uh, yes, I am the, for, for my state, I am the chairman of the COVID-19. I made myself the chairman because on, we are very busy on daily basis doing it. I didn't say somebody, but ably assisted by my secretary to the government. Where I can't go, I, the secretary is always capable of doing it. And all of us are very busy, while the, the deputy governor is in charge of palliatives, in, in charge of, uh, 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 is in charge of uh, palliatives. Well, I have seen that uh, the palliative is coming in different ways. From the explanation from the COVID team, ably led by Aliko, Alaja Aliko Dangote, uh, they are going to bring uh, assistance in form of uh, equipments. I think the equipped centers. And then the other part of the palliative is the provision of uh, what is termed by some, some, some of my friends as the stomach infrastructure, in quote, stomach infrastructure, because that is the food palliative. And then the, the conditions, however, is that they are not giving, in terms of the one that is done by private organizations, they are not giving money to the states. What they are doing is that they are doing it themselves. They will buy the food, send it to your state, and you have a committee to distribute the food. The same thing with the equipment, they will do that. Already, the other one by federal government is already ongoing now. Because I mentioned things like the social investment. The social investment is palliative. People are getting three months or two or three months uh, allowances in advance. Instead of the first month, instead of one month, it's palliative. People are sitting at home, and instead of the school feeling that we used to get when they are in school, they are not in school now, but they are at home, and the data will show that, yes, you are beneficiary. Now, what they do is that they buy food, they give you, according to the number of your children that are beneficiaries, they give it to you, and this food you are going to take to your parents. You eat the food. That is palliative. That is palliative. So this is what I say is palliative. And I've explained, taking time to explain that to my people uh, in my state. And I say, and the, 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 the fact is that the explanation is that when people are already in sal on salaries, and when people are seeing that you are capable of taking care of yourself during these work-free days, you are sitting at home, you are having salaries, then you should not be talking about palliative again. Your salary should be able to help you to go and buy food to stock at home because you are not spending much now. You are always at home. And then the additional palliative, which I also add, is that the advantage of getting close to your, to your family. Many people run away from their families, but today, by God's grace, they are back, and the family will know them. They will also know themselves very, very well and know what is happening, the problems in their families. It's another palliative. All right. another okay. Now, uh, if you ask people on the streets, in fact, we've heard comments of some people up until now don't believe that there's anything like COVID-19 or some others feel that it is a sickness of the rich people. Now, when it comes to the issue of enlightenment and awareness, how much of that is your government doing to ensure people understand the dangers of, uh, of, 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 of uh, or the dangers against 
not obeying uh, all the rules, the regulation, the palliatives, all of those measures as the case may be. Talk to us about enlightenment uh, from your end. Well, thank you very much. I think in respect to enlightenment in my state, I must thank my press crew, I must thank the media in the state, and must thank stakeholders. When I say stakeholders, we had stakeholders in Plateau State when we had the challenge of insecurity. But when COVID-19 came, you know, we, we handled it as like war, like fighting insecurity. So what I did was to transform the, the stakeholders that were already put in on grounds for security to fighting the, the same stakeholders, converting them to fighting, addressing the issue of COVID-19. So in, in that, uh, that uh, stakeholders uh, composition, you have, it, it's all inclusive. You have traditional rulers, you have religious leaders, you have the youth council, you have women, you have disabled, and everybody is included. So that team I now transform into a team for for COVID uh, COVID nineteen. The national assembly, the state assembly were also part of it because when we started, we started first of all, we took one week of enlightenment and awareness, and after that one, within that one week. What I did was to give as an incentive. I paid salary, and that salary was for the match, because we pay salaries as and when due. Right now, we're preparing to pay a salary. So we paid salary for match. And as we paid the salary, we told them that handle this salary very well, because this salary will be used in fighting COVID-19. So don't go and go on to, because your children are at home now, everybody is going to be at home, manage it very well. So we didn't have quarrel about that. So the level of awareness, there was also translation and also uh, uh, of press statements, both translated into different languages. The same thing that we did at the state level was what we did also, the level of awareness at the local government council. So all the chairmen were very busy. They set up similar committees in the local government going for awareness from one area to the other. As it is, even today, we have not stopped. We move on with awareness, and then we also try to give opportunity for people to also look up to what federal is doing. And this time, I see briefing from the presidential task force. I'm glued to my television. I look at it, like I told the SJB, I say, yeah. I'm always with you. I follow you. I follow whatever you are saying. And if I have questions, I ask. That is in addition to the conferences that we have at the Governor's Forum and also at the Northern Governor's Forum. All right. Now, WHO has warned that they, there are likelihood of rising cases of COVID-19 in sub-Saharan African countries because of their weak uh, health system. Nigeria is no exception. Uh, what do you think Nigeria should be focusing on now to ensure that we beat COVID-19? Well, I think uh, Nigeria should be very... I didn't know why we didn't concentrate. I, I, we, we must ad admit this fact that uh, we didn't, first of all, we had Ebola in this, uh, in this country. After Ebola, we had Lassa fever. By now, we should be concentrating on the healthcare, on the healthcare system. And then also, uh, we must put our concentration on the healthcare. Because you see, sometimes people enjoy traveling outside. To go outside, it's better to, to develop our own healthcare, and then to ensure that uh, it is also adequate and which can also be compared to anyone outside. And that is the only thing that we can make sure that uh, we avoid issues like uh, the virus, issues like uh, the COVID-19. And I, do, I don't know what will come in, but God forbid, what, what will come in if we address fully the issue of COVID-19. But it is something that we must put hands together. When I hear people say they don't believe, I wonder whether they are Nigerians they are whether they live in this country, to say that you don't believe that COVID-19 exists. Now, with the death of uh, 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 our father, with the death of our uncle, the chief of staff to the president, that will convince everybody that COVID, this disease, does not spare your status. Whether you are a rich man or you are a poor man, we have seen a lot of people that are, uh, are on the list now the number of people that have died because of this uh, virus. It's not to say that we must continue to be careless because it has not reached our state or it has not reached my family. 
So I said, that, no, no, no. This man, because I've had people say that this is, this is, the, is the sickness of the rich. Uh, sickness of the rich. That is very unfortunate. I think the best thing is for all of us to concentrate, be very serious, and put our hands together to address this issue once and for all. And after that, put in structures that will address them for the future. All right. Now, uh, social distancing is one of the measures that is being recommended world over to ensure that people don't pass on uh, the COVID-19 from one person to another. H how are you ensuring this in your state uh, alongside the availability of hand sanitizers? Well, part of the lockdown that we did in my state was to ensure, first of all, we took a week to ensure social distancing. That's why we closed down markets. All the markets that were, we closed them down. Even the ones that we left, we said you must ensure that you work within the regulations. Uh, the religious leaders, we had a briefing with them, and we assured them that, yes, you must also comply. You can't continue to have religion when people in your church are dying. They will run away and leave that place, or in the mocks are dying. So what we did was that at first we restricted it to 50, and then with the distancing, and uh, we you, and then some of the social activities which remained uh, banned up to today, the nightclubs, uh, drinking uh, places, and uh, stuff like uh, the means of transportation, we took control over them. And what we did was that the security were also doing their work. If uh, you take a, a kekena pep and you carry more than three persons, you they see you, you don't you you do arrest. But the most important thing was also enforcement. You know, Nigerians, when you start a program, you put regulations and you don't, don't ensure total enforcement, you find laxity within, within those people who are supposed to obey. So we put a strong enforcement group. And within the enforcement, we have regulations. If you violate any of our regulations, there are punishments. Because we've already put the punishments, it is either you pay fine, or you go for community service. Community service like prisoners will put you on community service within that period. And then the last one is that we quarantine you, especially for those who sneaked in. When you sneak in, we quarantine, we have isolation centers. We quarantine you in that place. We keep you for 14 days. And after 14 days, you are tested. If you are confirmed that you are negative, then you can go back to your place, go back to your home. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, what we do is to ensure that we control this and to protect the people. All right. Uh, it's good to have you join us still, uh, Governor uh, Simon Lalong. Now, before I let you go, one other issue that a lot of people are talking about are the reports of insecurity in parts of the state in Barakin Ladi, in, uh, around uh, Langtang and all of that. We hear reports of uh, attacks on the people. How does that compound uh, the situation right now? Well, before I also end, let me also use the opportunity to still condole Mr. President on the death of his chief of staff, uh, Malang Abakyari. We had sent condolences through the governor's forum and through my state. So let me use the opportunity to extend it again to the good friend, my good friend, the governor of Borno State and the good people of Borno State, where he came from, and uh, to pray that his, his soul have internal rest and also the God to give them, the, the, the Mr. President, the people of Borno, and the spirited Nigerians the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Now I'm talking about security. Yes, uh, during this time, you know hoodlums will want to take advantage of it. Especially when we started with the first one, we closed for seven days. And we realized that there were pockets of insecurity that was going on. Now some, some criminals were now using this opportunity while we're addressing this menace to perpetrate crimes we have not stopped. We move on with awareness, and then we also try to give opportunity for people to also look up to what federal is doing. And each time I see a briefing from the presidential tax force, I'm glued to my television. I look at it, like I told the SJ, I say, I'm always with you. I follow you, I follow whatever you are saying, and if I have questions, I ask. That is in addition to the conferences that we have at the Governor's Forum and also at the Northern Governor's Forum. 
All right. Now, WHO has warned that they, that are likelihood of rising cases of COVID-19 in sub-Saharan African countries because of their weak uh, health system. Nigeria is no exception. Uh, what do you think Nigeria should be focusing on now to ensure that we beat COVID-19? Well, I think uh, Nigeria should be very... I didn't know why we didn't concentrate. I, I, we, we must ad admit this fact that uh, we didn't... First of all, we had Ebola in this, uh, in this country. After Ebola, we had Lassa fever. By now, we should be concentrating on the healthcare, on the healthcare system. And then also, uh, we must put our concentration on the healthcare. Because, you see, sometimes people enjoy traveling outside. To go outside, it's better to, to develop our own healthcare and then to ensure that uh, it is also adequate and which can also be compared to anyone outside. And that is the only thing that we can make sure that uh, we avoid issues like uh, the virus, issues like uh, the COVID-19. And I don't, I don't know what will come in, but God forbid, what, what will come in if we address fully the issue of COVID-19. But it is something that we must put hands together. When I hear people say they don't believe, I wonder whether they are Nigerians, they are whether they live in this country, to say that you don't believe that COVID-19 exists. Now, with the death of uh, 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 our father, with the death of our uncle, the chief of staff to the president, that will convince everybody that COVID, this disease, does not spare your status. Whether you are a rich man or you are a poor man, we have seen a lot of people that are, uh, are on the list now. The number of people that have died because of this uh, virus. It's not to say that we must continue to be careless because it has not reached our state or it has not reached my family. So I said, uh, no, no, no. This man, because I've had people say, that this is, this is, a, is a sickness of the rich, a sickness of the rich. That is very unfortunate. I think the best thing is for all of us to concentrate, be very serious and put our hands together to address this issue once and for all. And after that, put in structures that will address them for the future. All right. Now, uh, social distancing is one of the measures that is being recommended world over to ensure that people don't pass on uh, the COVID-19 from one person to another. H how are you ensuring this in your state uh, alongside the availability of hand sanitizers? Well, part of the lockdown that we did in my state was to ensure, first of all, we took a week to ensure social distancing. That's why we closed down markets. All the markets that were, we closed them down. Even the ones that we left, we said you must ensure that you work within the regulations. You are, uh, the religious leaders, we had a briefing with them, and we assured them that, yes, you must also comply. You can't continue to have religion when people in your church are dying. They will run away and leave that place, or in the mocks are dying. So what we did was that at first we restricted it to 50, and then with the distancing, and, uh, we, you, and then some of the social activities, which remained a ban up to today, the nightclubs, uh, drinking uh, places, and uh, stuff like uh, the means of transportation, we took control over them. And what we did was that the security were also doing their work. If uh, you take a, a kekena pep and you carry more than three persons, you, they see you, you, don't, you, you do arrest. But the most important thing was also enforcement. You know, Nigerians, when you start a program, you put regulations and you don't, don't ensure total enforcement, you find laxity. Within, within those people who are supposed to obey. So we put a strong enforcement group, and within the enforcement, we have regulations. If you violate any of our regulations, there are punishments, because we've already put the punishments. It is either you pay fine, or you go for community service. Community service like prisoners will put you on community service within that period. And then the last one is that we quarantine you, especially for those who sneaked in. When you sneak in we quarantine, we have isolation centers. We quarantine you in that place. We keep you for 14 days. And after 14 days, you are tested. If you are confirmed that you are negative, then you can go back to your place, go back to your home. Hmm. But otherwise, what we do is to ensure that we control this and to protect the people.
All right. Uh, it's good to have you join us still, uh, Governor uh, Simon Lanlong. Now, before I let you go, one other issue that a lot of people are talking about are the reports of insecurity in parts of the state in Barakin Ladi, in, uh, around uh, Langtang and all of that. We hear reports of uh, attacks on the people. How does that compound uh, the situation right now? Well, before I also end, let me also use the opportunity to still condole Mr. President on the death of his chief of staff, uh, Malang Abakiari. We had sent condolences through the governor's forum and through my state. So let me use the opportunity to extend it again to the good friend, my good friend, the governor mm -hmm. of Borno State and the good people of Borno State, where he came from, and uh, to pray that his, his soul have internal rest and also the God to give them, the, the, the Mr. President, the people of Borno, and the spirited Nigerians, the 42, to bear this irreparable loss. Now I'm talking about security. Yes, uh, during this time, you know hoodlums who want to take advantage of it. Especially when we started with the first one, we closed for seven days. And we realized that there were pockets of insecurity that was going on. Now some, some criminals were now using this opportunity while we're addressing this menace to perpetrate crimes around the far away outside the outskirts of the of the of the of the metropolis so but, but we have a very vigilant uh, uh, security group the army are already there in that place where they had that uh, problem because i spoke i, I summoned a, a, an emergency security meeting and we to address that as i'm talking now soldiers are there soldiers are there the police are also there and then the, we had helicopters. We thank God that we, we, they send helicopters to us from Abuja. And the helicopters are now hovering around the uh, Plateau State to ensure that we are, uh, people are protected in addressing this issue. So as far as we are concerned, insecurity is something that we had addressed a long time ago. So it won't take us much to put in addressing the issue, which is also our cardinal policy trust. It is our number one policy trust in the state. So we're not joking with it. I sympathize, use the opportunity to sympathize with few people who lost their lives and also their families for this great, for, for this great loss. But then we are, uh, we are handling the issue of COVID-19 together with security. We know how vol volatile our places are sometimes. And so we're not very, uh, we're not relaxing at all on the issue of security. I told you, it's war. We are fighting one war against the disease, and the same war we are fighting also against criminals in my state. All right. Thank you right. so much, uh, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State. Thank you for talking to us on uh, TVC News and TVC Breakfast this morning, and we wish you well in the duty of governance in Plateau State. Thank you very much, TVC, and I look forward to meeting you back again. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless everyone. <laughs>